What's up everyone, this is Cher talking and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be giving a review to Romance Festival Shira's banner. In this banner, we have three new limited styles, that being Golden Ball, Shira and Vampire Lady. Both Golden Ball and Shira are very interesting characters, with Shira being the best one here. And Vampire Lady having some interesting charm effects, uh, with Shira being a debuffer that covers agility and STR and also stun. Golden Ball being a very defensive unit for support against physical damage. Let's start with Shira, and she is very interesting now that she got buffs. And we need to compare her to Shiel since they are the same character, you cannot use both together. You can see her as an improvement over Shiel. And uh, we have way higher status here with 80% agility, 110% intelligence and 85% will. Well, she also has bonuses for agility and intelligence, so those three status are her main focus. With such a high agility and intelligence combination, she will hardly ever miss when using her spells, and it's good because she's a debuffer, and some enemies may just buff their agility and she will still catch them. Well, her endurance is only 58, and that's strange, since she is also designed to be used as a counter unit, and the first passive is called Calamity. When she's being directly attacked, she has a chance. 37% to evade the attack and counterattack with a skill called Clear Eyes. This attack is the same as she uses when you are facing her as a boss. It's a very weak attack, at least C power only, single target, and it's shadow and cold damage. She has a chance to petrify. The chance may be low, but because her intelligence is pretty high, the chance may happen when you are facing enemies that have no resistance to petrify. But I do ask myself, when will I need such a thing? Maybe only on World Tower, and maybe if you have Final Impress, you can just use the shield to protect Shira and maybe allow her to petrify some enemies. This is a viable strategy, but only on World Tower. It's kind of a waste of something that could be better for her in long term. Then the second passive is Overtension. This one increases 15% on all times, 30% on combo, and 45% on overdrive. It was changed in JP, it was only an increase to dark damage. Then we have Fired Up 5, that increases 20% at all times. So, 35 at all times, and then 50% on combo, and 65 on overdrive. Good when you are needing to uh, finish a boss with overdrive. And if you want to finish a boss, you will probably use this skill here, call it Swear of Sorrow, and that is only if you don't need other inheritance, because it's still her strongest attack for single target. Triple S damage with 59 modifier, both Blunt and Moon, but there's a drawback. It reduces all surviving alliance, love and charisma, but still a nuke option for finishing enemies. Well, uh, now we need to discuss her skills, and she was buffed in Global to be a stun specialist. All her skills has a stun chance, that's interesting, and I must say that's even better for her first skill, called Sorrows. This one is a 3 BP attack with deep power, both Blunt and Moon again, and this skill here has a medium chance to stun. And medium is pretty good with such a massive intelligence. It may not be as good as Messerting, Bubble Pop, because Bubble Pop is only 3 as well, and she also self buffs for intelligence, but this one should be very close. And not only this, but the most important thing that was already in JP is the chance to reduce the target's agility. And that chance is small, but High intelligence, remember, very high chance to inflict. And the debuff is 15% in next level. So you can just keep using this forever since it's only 3 BP and it competes with another style that's pretty interesting and useful for a vision strategist. That is Beauty. Beauty has Aerodyne. Aerodyne has lower power, it's only E, it's only Slash, but it's AoE. And it being AoE will be the best option when you are facing more than one enemy. But now you have another option, and let me tell you, Beauty does not have such a high status. If your enemy keeps buffing his agility, maybe one day Beauty will miss. That will not happen with Shira, as you can see here, inferior agility and inferior intelligence. So, for situations like I just said, Shira may be better, but only against a single boss, okay? So, 3vp, chance to stun, most bosses are immune to stun, only challenges sometimes may have something that can be stunned. But still very interesting because if you need stun, let's say that you are bringing buffers as well, 
then you keep buffing your intelligence to increase the chances, you can also use stones that decrease stone resistance, and you need to debuff the agility of your enemy so that it never attacks before you. You see, we have both effects on this skill, so pretty impressive, but well, still kinda of niche since stun is not something that you use every day. Okay, a specialist. Then the second attack is called Hymn of the Night Wind. This was buffed in global, it already had the medium chance to inflict the stun. The new thing is this, fast. It's now a fast attack, with only 8 pp. That's interesting, since you can use this twice in a 3 turn cycle. Cares that can do this are not plenty, and uh, have two different options, I'll talk about them in a few. But this one is both stun and moon, and as you can see here, it has medium chance to stun. So you can use that in Dojo, and you can just stun enemies that are capable of being stunned right from start, since it's fast, and the higher the Dojo difficulty gets, the higher the speed of the enemies as well. With 8 PP, that's pretty nice. And I can tell you that you can still use this skill also two times in a three-turn cycle, depending on the stage, the damage will be very good, since her intelligence is pretty high, and C power may not be a, like sometimes we need to kill a wave, but if you're using her with some other style that also constantly AoE, she may be able to finish a wave. Okay, the third skill is called Dark Nebula. This one here is an AoE attack. Uh, it's not fast, that uses 12 BP, so she cannot use this on turn 1. Yes, sadly. This time it's only Dark, doesn't have Blunt. And it also has a chance to stun. This time it's high chance, and with such a high intelligence, she can stun even enemies with resistance. And she will also debuff their will, but it seems like this will happen only after the stun chance, as you can see here by the description itself. So the buffing will may be interesting, but only on turn 2 we have better options with Psycho Noise that only uses 8 BP and debuff both intelligence and will. So, uh, Dark Nebula is only for when you want to kill a wave with Dark Nebula as a damage. It may be in some scenarios where you need a lot of field debuff, but very niche situations. So, uh, you can see that her nuke potential is kind of limited. Only on turn 2 for AoE, and only by inheritance of Zero Sorrow. That's uh, an attack with a downside that decreases your love and charisma. But if you are farming and you need to do damage on turn 1 against a boss that only has one wave, it's still okay to use that, since you don't need love and charisma. But in boss fights in long term, this is not good, especially if you are using AoE heals. But uh, now that we are here with Xiao, we can discuss the inheritances. She has an agility debuff uh, as her first skill. And remember that Xiao also has STR debuff, so with this character now you have plenty of effects. The skill in sense is an AoE STR debuff with 4 BP. This one is not infinite because you have to use 4 instead of 3, but still a very cheap cost, and it's AoE. This one competes with Mirage Kick from Copelia Ren, and there is also Cow Rush that has a bigger damage with 6 BP, and uh, the debuff is the same, so 15%. I suggest you inherit in sense most of the time, unless you want more damage, but in my opinion, Cow Rush is only for those that want to use Shiel because they don't want to summon for Shira. So, in my opinion, Shira just has a very interesting build. Now she has access to Agility debuff, to STR debuff, she has an access to stun chances for some very specific challenges, yeah, but still very incredible, and the next best character after Miss Surfing. Uh, I think that when you compare all the things that she can bring, she becomes one of the best debuffers and mages in the game right now. Competing against Buni, I still value Buni more than Shira because Buni has chance to evade. It's an AoE agility buff, and agility buffs are higher than STR debuffs, and uh, Soros is only single target. But she may be the next best thing exactly after Buni. Okay, now to the next character. This one is Golden Ball. She is a physical defensive character. Golden Ball is weak to magical damage, just like her monster version, with very low will, but extremely high endurance with 110%, that's the same values as for Mew. She also has bonuses for that, and 87% agility, with 16 points as bonus. Her STR is not so good, and she's not made for damage. She's... As for passives, the first one is Algui. When being attacked, that can be 
both direct and indirect attacks, she will increase all surviving allies and risk. And that means even when she evades, she will do this. And I don't know if you remember a style that works similar, but that one is Halloween Princess White Rose. And Princess White Rose is a very powerful unit. We will be increasing her to triple S grade in the cheer list because this passive called Here's Your Pumpkin is very important in the game. Because every time that she gets attacked, and let me tell you something, uh, you don't need to use her attack. You can just wait for AoE damage from your enemy, and every time that she gets hit, she will just keep buffing Will. But Will is more important because Will, besides uh, increasing resistance to magical attacks, will reduce your chance of being inflicted with status elements and debuffs. Now, getting back to Golden Ball. Golden Ball will only increase endurance, but in the same effect, 10% and by the same method. Endurance is not as important as will, because you need to re reach very high levels of endurance to change something, and it does not have the added effect of producing something else. But it may still be a viable strategy against physical damage. But if your enemy focuses too much on single target attacks, Golden Ball will need to be placed on the front lines, and you can use her on a Tiger Shark formation, but that one is not the best one when you're facing bosses, and you can try uh, Tiger's Den as well, placing her on the front, it increases a little off the chance of being attacked. Sadly, she cannot give down to herself, that would be more interesting. And then she has Iron Wall Defense. When she's attacked, damage will be reduced by very large effect. That should be 30% reduction in damage. She is very good against physical damage, she decreases even further, and even against some spells, she would not take too much because of this passive. Then the last one is Painful Lesson. When she is attacking, uh, it can be either direct or indirect, she will recover her BP. But there's only a high chance of this happening. That is 37%, or once every three uh, attacks. Depending on the boss, some bosses attack three times in a turn, some other bosses may attack less times. This will just allow her to use some of her other skills more often. Could be better, she could get one more BP by a turn, but this is what she got. And she's also better to be used against bosses that have multiple attacks. Kinda makes sense, in a way. As for skills, we have the first one being Kiai. This is a free skill when you fully awaken, and it's fast, gives her Morali up and guard up with medium effect. Medium effect is 25% increase in damage and 25% reduction in damage that you receive. She will also recover 1 BP. It's important because she needs BP for her cycles. And giving guard up medium here is interesting because uh, if you don't have uh, that available when you are skipping a turn, you still have more defense especially if you should place it on the front line. Then a second one is called Have Some More. A 6 BP attack with B power 25 modifier, blunt damage, but don't think too much about damage because she doesn't have a single damage passive. It will attack and recover all surviving allies with a very small effect. Still the healing part should be around 150 or something. The next skill is called Shrine Dance, and this one is a support and fast skill, so she will be able to use this before the enemy attacks and will grant all surviving allies a large guard up for two turns. How much is a large guard up? Well, it's 35%, so you will receive less damage, 35% less. But that one does not stack as you think with other damage reduction passives. It's multiplicative instead of addictive, so eventually you has diminishing reruns, but still helps a lot and it's the highest value for guard top in the game. It kind of clashes with Nawaz Dar because she gives a defensive enhance buff that clashes with guard up and you cannot use both together, so uh, it's something that you need to think. Golden Ball will work better with Matriarch and also Matriarch buff Endurance, so if the enemy only uses physical attack, you can just use Golden Ball with Matrak, you would not need Nawal's Daughter. Uh, the good thing that Nawal's Daughter could give into Golden Ball is that plus 1 BP, because look, she needs 9 to use Shrine Dance. And then on the next turn she will use Kiai, she will get 1 BP, she will also reduce her own guard up, because this one is 25. 
she would need two more to be able to use Shrine Dance again. So she would need to proc Painful Lesson 3 uh, two times in two turns. It will depend on the enemy. If the enemy attacks multiple times, this may happen. But if not, sometimes we will not have a guard up effect up. So there are some problems with this design. But as you can see, she does buff Endurance while she just keeps being attacked. So the damage will be reduced along the way, even if you don't have guard up up. Uh, it's interesting, but I wish she had another debuff skill that will increase her utility. So her cyclists are either use the second skill and then first skill, second skill again, and keep using that, or just use Shrine Dance, Ki, and then Shrine Dance when available again. Well, for Inheritance, we don't have many things. This A style is inside the game. You can get it from a permanent event. And we have here, well, just damage, and she does not do damage at all. And then we have this other style that was given from free on a summer event, and she has Golden Syrup. This one is good because it heals herself and it will also increase her own endurance even further. The other things are not important since she's not for damage. Jelly Girl is a triple S skill that you could just use for overdrive, but I still don't think it's useful at all. So, uh, let's return here. This Golden Ball is interesting for challenge. She's not a farmer unit, she would not help you at all with that. Only for very specific hard challenges, and not in every scenario. Uh, we already have buffers like Matriarch Nala's Daughter, and they are very good. You will be able to clear most events with those two styles. You will not need Golden Ball, but she can just open different strategies against very hard challenges in the future. If you value that, Golden Ball can help you. If you don't value that, just go for Shira, and when you get her, you can skip the better. There's one more thing to say about Golden Ball. There are plenty of different strategies in this game to face hard challenge. We can use the cheesy evasion strategy where we buff or evasion and decrease the accuracy from the enemy. There's also another method that we just buff ourselves and debuff the enemy. But debuff strategies are starting to have plenty of problems. Why? Because there are bosses with the Defy Weaknesses skill. That skill will cleanse all the buffs that you land. Because of that, strategies that rely only on buff may be better in the future, and Golden Ball will just allow you to stack endurance and just so high that in some situations you will not receive damage. I know that some of these situations are not so common, but still she can be a key character for some scenarios. And that increases her utility in the long run. And she's pretty unique, you will not find another character with the same passive. And now it's time to talk about Vampire Lady, and we do have plenty of versions of her. A character was a monster that has more styles than real characters from Romancing Saga. Okay, this is the fourth style of her, cute and anything. We had the Summer style, the Halloween style, and a Platinum style. As you can see, this one has a higher STR, it has the higher endurance, it does have the best dexterity tied up with other ones, a little lower agility when compared even to the Halloween style, funny, and a very poor intelligence. Will has only 55, and very close in charisma with the summer style. This is important because we kind of compare both. Let's go with this. 96% uh, STR is not so high, she has 17 bonuses, and also 87 Charisma with 11 bonus. Actually, it's not so bad on 84%. Dexterity is on average levels for today's standards. As for passives, we have Vampire Pills. This one, when she attacks, she has a 25% chance to recover her self HP by around 600, and also recover all surviving allies by a very small value. That should be around 130, because her love is not that high. Well, I don't like this too much, well, 25% uh, is not so high, and uh, 130 to everyone in the squad does not change the flow of battle. But if you have multiple AoE healers, maybe, depending on the situation, but still low value. And the second passive is called a Charming Practice 1. When landing an attack, that is any of her skills, and even the normal attack, she has a 37% chance to get 1 DP back, but also inflict Charm for 4 turns. Well, 
37% to inflict charm is pretty massive. It was buffered in global. We had her past version, this one, that had inside your charm that was 25% chance to inflict charm. And there's a very interesting thing about passive chances to inflict charm. They can work in any type of general. If your enemy is female, it will also land, something that will not work when using a skill with charm effect. As you can see here, this skill from her summer style, Shadow Bliss, will only work against male and not female. It will also not work against generalist enemies. So, you can even inflict charm to enemies that are immune dead if they don't have resistance to charm when using charming practice. The problem is that it's 37% chance, but in some situations you can exploit this. Let's say Hidden Dojo, and you are a new player and you have having difficulty. You can use her AoE attack and try to inflict charm. And this game is also very fun, because uh, if all your enemies are not immune to charm, she will try to inflict charm to all of them. And it will work on all on the same time, it does not proc separately. Uh, and she has AoE attacks with ease. We'll be talking about them later. And um, Fired Up Fly. This increases her damage by 20%. For our skills, the first one is called First Slash. It's an AoE attack, slash damage, E power, not so high, but it also increases her endurance. I don't know why, since she, uh, she's not being used in the front line. Her endurance is only 76%. She's not a tank. Seems a little random here. But, it's an AoE attack, it will proc Charming Practice, so very useful, because it's cheap. The second skill is called Yaezakura. It's both Slash and Shadow, it's a good source of Shadow for long fights, but not for quick fights. And it will also increase her Law of and Charisma by medium effect, that is 30%. Because it's only 5 VP, you can use this multiple times, and just increase the heal effect from Vampire Pills both the AoE part and the self part. So her heal will just get better and better as long as you keep using Aia Izakura. And the last skill is called Charming Plume. And this one is a little strange. It's fast, but it's not full AoE. It's only column of foes and deals only slash damage. Uh, but it has a buff to all surviving allies, love and charisma by 40%. That's pretty massive, of course, but... Um, Hitting a column of foes, guys, it's so hard to find enemies aligning in a column for you to take advantage of this. And if you are only going for the damage for a single target, it does not justify. I wish they just changed this for double S damage at least, since uh, if you are not hitting more than one target, at least it's still uh, okay damage. She's not a damage specialist anyway. We missed a mark here. But uh, if you want to go with this attack first, it will buff your love and charisma, and then let's say you just keep using Yaezakura after that. It will also increase the heal effects from Power Pills. Now let's talk about Inheritance. If you have the Halloween version, you have Mirage Blade, you can just upgrade this to Mirage Blade Plus, and you will have a 22 modifier B power skill to use on turn 1, with 37% chance to inflict charm. And then after that, we just use first slash twice for a three turn cycle. You can also inherit another skill that is Marine Bat. This one is not as powerful as Mirage Blade Plus, but you can use this twice in a row and it has dark power. You will then on turn three use first slash. If you want a better single target skill, you can also go with Shadow Bliss. It also has a chance to inflict charm and it's high chance. Against males, it's a very good but still charm is very niche. You have here SS54 power. In the future, she will be able to upgrade Blood Rage, and this will become a 10BP skill with triple S power. But the future is pretty far. There is also Heaven on Earth that will become S power with only 6 MP. But again, she's not exactly a damage dealer. When you compare here, even the summer version has higher potential by having two damage passives, even if she has a lower STR. So there's that. I don't think that this character is that important. Well, the charm effect is interesting for people that want to, well, use her in dojo on some very specific stages in the future for some challenges where enemies are not immune to charm. Charm is nice and four turns you'll probably have a good chance to inflicting charm again before the enemy recovers fully from that. So it's a okay strategy, just not viable all the time. So, yeah, the last interesting character, but 
it will be more useful for our new players in Golden Ball. With that said, let's return to the banner image. And is this banner worth summoning for? I have to tell you that I give a silver award for this banner. The reasons are, it's only three SS style. You still have chances of getting off banners, and off banners are terrible right now. But Shira is just so good, she's very close to Bune, and Bune is a very good character. And Golden Ball will help you with some very hard challenges, but not everyone cares about those challenges. If you want the best character, get Shira and go out. You also don't really need Shira, in my opinion, since you can use Shiel for SDR debuff just as she is, she's pretty okay. And you can wait for other debuffers that will come in the future. She is still skippable, I can tell you. If you don't have gems, don't worry too much, you can skip this banner. I give a silver award more for veterans that will just have more value for different hard challenges. If you are a new player, this banner here may not be the best for you, because um, besides Vampire Lady and Shirak, you will not find too much value on Golden Ball, not on the short term. Oh, and let's talk about the places that these characters will be on the tier list. Shira will be very high on the top, just close to Bune. Vampire Lady will be on the S tier, and Golden Ball will be uh, very close to the end of the double S tier list. With that said, that's my opinion. What's your Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, there are links here in the description of the video. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye.